Hello and welcome. Welcome to my entry for the BeagleBone Cape Design Competition. So, what do we have here? We have here a BeagleBone. Yay! It's quite a nice board running full Linux with USB and Ethernet ports. And it should be quite suitable for robotics and other projects, but it's lacking one thing. An easy way to connect motors, such as this, or this, or even this. I struggled around to find a solution to it, and here it is. My cape design. Da -da -da -da. A dual motor cape with qu dual quadrature encoder inputs. Now, due to the holiday shutdown of the PCB houses, I'm unable to show you the finished board, but this is a full-size layout. And it fits right here, right on top of the beagle bone. Now this design is unique in that you can barely see it here, but I will show you the PC board layout in a few minutes. Um, but it's a dual motor control H-bridge design designed to control heavy duty motors such as this even. The chips I used here are rated up to 30 amps, but ideally I don't think I'd push it past about 10, 12 amps each because of the lack of heat sinks and the crowded space inside this board, but it fits nicely on top of the beagle bone. Now the design is loosely based upon an earlier design which I did here based upon a single H-bridge design. Um, and this actually has been built and tested and and it actually works. Um, you can see here it actually adapts um, the LPC Expresso board and um, plugs it in and it has a quadrature encoder in it as well. Now this was a single H bridge so with the next with the beagle board design decided to go more ambitious and go for a dual H-bridge design because what I find is mainly when you're controlling robots you have two motors and it would be ideal that you could actually program the motors to drive straight and in order to do that you really need to control the both motors with, with two quadrature encoders and basically monitoring and putting in a PID loop, a dual PID loop, so that they will basically drive at the same speed and cover the same distance. This is a similar trick that's been used in several places, including um, the LEGO NXT Mindstorms uh, programming uh, controller. Now we can see the design of the board. The design was built on using Eagle. Here are the motor, motor connections for motor 1, connection for motor 2, and the battery. Here is QEI1 and QEI2, the quadrature encoder interfaces. <coughs> These two are the chips, the H-bridge chips from STMicro, handling 30 amps each, and they are controlled by a DSPIC microcontroller which generates a PWM signals to control the motors. As well, the DSPIC takes in the QEI, the quadrature encoder inputs, and as such can do a p very tight PID loop. And it communicates to the beagle bone using I2C. The reason to embed yet another microcontroller in here is so that we can offload the PID control from the beagle bone onto this board. And the microcontroller itself is a under $5 part, so I thought it was pretty much worthwhile, especially since Linux is not a real-time operating system. It makes it so much simpler to design it with this microcontroller on the board. Now, looking at the 
schematic itself, here you can see the two H-Bridge chips. There's the DSPIC and there is the E squared prom that's needed for the beagle bone cape design. And that's basically it. It's a relatively simple design. Uh, I should expect this to work first time out. Oh yes, and there's two bicolor LEDs that's in the board itself. They are located over here and over here. And they will let you basically <clears throat> see whether the motor is in forward or in reverse. So that's a useful diagnostic that I've added into the board. So the reason for the choice of this particular chip is when I search TI's um, parametric search for an H-Bridge chip, really couldn't find any that I liked that could handle that much current. I wanted the extra current to spare um, just in case I needed it to power even more powerful motors and um, as such uh, the ST micro part ended up being the best solution here and this is the part that I've actually used in the design and you can see it's rated for 30 amps um, each of those chips of course like I said earlier because we're not really heat sinking it or anything like that. I wouldn't push more than 10 or 15 amps at most out of it. But it, uh, a little bit of an overkill is uh, good for the job. The reason I picked the PIC microcontroller is because searching here on TI's parts, the best I could find that had dual quadrature encoders was the um, <coughs> Piccolo series. And the problem that with the Piccolo series is the packaging it came in were all like 100 pin packages and I was kind of tight on space and I also did not want to build the board with like under 10 millimeter, I'm sorry, 10 mils, not 10 millimeter, 10 mils design rules. So all the traces here are basically 12 or 16 mils each and the spacing between the traces is uh, 10 mils at least well some of them might be down to 8 mils but anyway it's designed such that it will be easy to manufacture oh and one more thing this board is designed to be stackable meaning that you could put one two or even three of these boards on top of the beagle bone controlling two four or even six motors this is done by this jumper here which selects the individual address for each board. So we could actually have up to six motors controlled from a single beagle bone more than enough for your best robotics project. Thank you and have a nice day.